Hello, Joe Neville here. In this video, I'm going to be using Docker and OpenV switch to create a VXLAN network that can speak to an external server. So I'm going to be configuring a hardware VTEMP to interoperate with a software VTEMP. Stick around if that is of interest to you. And before we start, a quick plug for the other work that I've been doing over on the Airheads Broadcasting Channel, and that is my VXLAN Explainer series. This is where I do a deep dive into VXLAN, having a look at the RFC, the use cases, doing some packet captures and really looking at what's going on in those headers. Because I think with VXLAN personally, that a lot of network engineers kind of get confused about what it can and can't do. Because in the original RFC, it, there really wasn't much in there. It's basically just another encapsulation type. Where the confusion comes, I think, is that most people approach it as part of a wider solution, say something like BGP, eVPN, and then VXLAN. And that's a lot to swallow in one go. That's a, that's a big dense stack there. So I think it's really useful to find out what's going on at every level by breaking it up. And I started with VXLAN. So link on screen now. Check those videos out if you think they will be of use to you. Check them out anyway, please. I could do with some extra views. But without further ado, let's just get on with this video. Here's the type of network I've been configuring in my VXLAN explainer videos. Now this uses hardware VTEMPs. These are physical switches connected via this layer three and configured with static VXLAN as illustrated by this dotted line here. I've also got a couple of servers which sit in the same subnet. So 172.18.51, I think it was a slash 29. So I've got dot one here, dot two over here. And in normal layer two, layer three, these servers would not be able to communicate because we've split this subnet with this other subnet here. Any traffic bound for nodes within the subnet will not be forwarded on by the local gateway. But with VXLAN configured, we do have connectivity. So a day in the life of a ping would go something like this. We do an ICMP echo request from dot one, we'll go towards dot two, that will hit the local gateway, be encapsulated with new outer Ethernet and IP header, UDP and VXLAN, sent across this layer three link towards the destination VTEMP, which will strip off those outer headers, strip off the VXLAN, so decapsulate, and then use the inner headers to forward the packet on towards the destination. So to dot two, which will respond to the ICMP echo request with an echo reply. Same deal again in reverse. It will hit the local VTEMP, be encapsulated, decapsulated, and then forward it on to the destination. So our original source, and we will see successful pings on our terminal. All good. But in this video, I'm going to move on to a different type of network. I'm going to retain one of the hardware VTEMPs here and an external Linux server. That's going to be UB1, so that's an Ubuntu server. And that's going to sit, this is going to be like emulating the customer side traffic for our source and destination. That's going to sit in the 172.18.1 network. And then the underlay has been transitioned. So this other hardware VTEMP has been demoted to a layer two only switch, providing connectivity to another Linux server. And on there, I'm going to configure OpenV switch. Now, one of the features of OpenV switch is VXLAN. I'm going to configure VXLAN on OpenV switch running on Ubuntu to be a software VTEMP, which will connect to our hardware VTEMP. So you can see the underlay it runs from here on this 10.150.99 slash 29 network. We've got dot one there and we've got dot four on the Linux server over here. And the VXLAN, the static VXLAN will be between these points. But what about the customer side? How am I going to emulate that? Well, on the Ubuntu server over here, I'm going to use Docker to build a Debian container. I found that the base Debian image had a few extra tools that made this process a bit smoother rather than just using the Ubuntu image. So I'm going to build the container using the Debian image and then that container is going to be given an additional connection rather than just the Docker zero that it comes up with. It's going to have a connection into OpenV switch here and I'm going to give it an IP address in that customer side network. So the 172.18.1 is going to be .51 and all being good, the Debian container will be able to send traffic 
to OpenV switch across the VXLAN out to the hardware VTemp here, which will be decapsulated and sent to our external Ubuntu server and vice versa, of course. So I'll be able to prove that with a ping. We'll be able to ping from this end right into the software world in... Uh... Okay, so what does that prove? Well, that proves interoperability between different implementations of VXLAN. One implementation running on hardware on an Aruba switch here, the 6300, and the other end running on open v switch so very different nodes a hardware switch coming from aruba running proprietary software and open v switch running on a linux server but they both adhere to the vxlan rfc so they understand the headers and they can communicate and the other nice thing about this other than you know getting to grips with a bit of docker and open v switch in the context of vxlan is that it provides a responsive lab environment so i can quickly build and tear down docker containers rather than having to build an external server or even a vm which can take a bit of time i can just fire up a container when i finish tear it down and the other thing that i can do obviously is i can build multiple containers really easily I could just automate this to create multiple Debian containers, put them in that customer side network, and they'll all have connectivity, everything being good across VXLAN to this external server. Now let's focus on the container network build. So these are the steps that we need to perform on the Ubuntu server that's going to be the host for Docker, the containers, and Open vSwitch. And please note, I haven't included all of the commands or all of the steps here because that would make the slide very busy. First of all, we're just going to look at the high level concepts so you can visualize those to hopefully understand what's really going on on the server and the process that we're following. And then in the next section, I'll go into the detailed step by step, command by command. OK, so step one of our process, we need to configure an Ethernet interface as part of the underlay. I've used NetPlan, which I know some people hate, but, you know, that's my choice. And I have configured this interface with the IP address 10.150.99.4. That physically connects off to the layer two switch and then onto the hardware VTemp. It shares a subnet with the hardware VTemp as part of the underlay. That's the important point. Okay, next step, and this is arbitrary. You can follow different steps, but this does need to be done at some point early on, and that is to install Docker. And I'll show you how to do that on Ubuntu in the next section. So we install Docker. I'm using the latest and greatest from the Docker website. And as part of that process, a Docker Zero bridge interface and network will be created. So that's the 172.17.0.0 slash 16 network. And the Docker Zero bridge will be given the IP address of dot one for that network. You can actually see that on the host. If you look at the IP addresses, you will see Docker Zero and you will see this IP address. Okay, and with Docker installed, the next step that I've chosen to take is to create a container. So it's a Debian container. The first time you go to run this, it won't have an image. So it will take a bit longer than usual because it needs to download the image. It will download the Debian image and then it will build a container. I've called it Deb1. And by default, that will be given an interface. Ethernet zero will of the container will be connected to the 172.17 network and it has an IP address here of dot two in the four fox set. You can actually have a look at that IP address if you run this command on the host with the Docker container running, you do a Docker exec, the name of the container, deb1, and you can then you can just do standard Linux commands that will be run on the container. So if we look at the IP addresses on the container, we see this eve zero, I've edited this to just include the relevant information, but as you can see, if zero and then the IP address at dot two in that slash 16 network. Okay, the next step that I'm going to follow is to configure Open vSwitch. And I should say that in my detailed step-by-step, -step, I'll be installing all of the packages that are required first. So I install Docker, install Open vSwitch before I go on and do the configuration. So then building the Docker container. But the install of Open vSwitch doesn't do anything to the network, unlike Docker. So I've skipped that step in this high-level overview. The main point being, make sure you've got Open vSwitch installed before you get to this stage. The first step that we need to perform when configuring Open vSwitch is to add a bridge. 
And we do that with the command OVS-VSCTL add br well, add BR, let's say, and, uh, and then give it a name. I've called it BR0. And you can have a look at that with the command OVS-VSCTL show, and that will show us our new bridge, which is marked as internal. And now we have BR0, the next step, to add in the VXLAN functionality is with this command. So it's the add port and we add onto BR0 a VXLAN port, VXLAN1. The command is much longer than this because you actually set, it's like configuring static VXLAN. You set the VNI, it's the key they call it, but that's the VNI. And then you have the remote IP address and that being the hardware VTEMP, our remote VTEMP that we want to send our encapsulated VXLAN traffic to. And if you note this 10.150.99.1, that is our hardware VTEMP. And with that configured, we've got open V switch, we've got our VTEMP, we've got our Docker network and our container, but there is a problem. And that's because the container doesn't have a connection to open V switch. So it has no access to the VXLAN network and the external world. Now, how do we solve that? Well, we add in a link and so another port on the container, which does connect into our OVS bridge. And we do that with this command, the OVS-Docker command, add-port, that's the name of the bridge. This is the port, I've called it ETH1. That's the container name, of course. And then I've given it an IP address. I've given it 172.18.1.51 in this slash 24. And if you remember from the previous diagrams, this is our emulated customer network. This is the traffic that we want to flow on the VXLAN network. We want this to be encapsulated so that we can speak to our external server, which is in the same subnet. If you remember, it was dot one in this subnet. As you can see here, this is the missing link. It connects our container to OpenV switch and you can do a Docker exec command on the Ubuntu server. There's the container name. You can see the port there and you can see the IP address. And all things being good, and our fingers crossed that this all works, then we will be able to send traffic from our container, which will hit the OpenV switch. It will be encapsulated by our VTEMP, and it will be able to flow across this network, or encapsulated in VXLAN, and be able to hit our external server out in the real world. How exciting is that? Well, maybe that's just me. Okay, so those are the high level steps. Now onto the detailed configuration steps. Here I am on my Linux server. So this is UB4 on my network. This is an Ubuntu server. I'll show you the version. It's the latest at the time recording. So it's Ubuntu 2104 and this is the server image. This is going to be the host of Docker, the containers and OpenV switch, of course. Now I've already configured an IP address for the underlay. I did that with NetPlan. So that was step one in our high level run through. And I'll show you that. So it's this that's important here. So it's ETH1 and 10.150.99.4 and it's a slash 24. I'll show you that with an IP address show dev and it is ETH1. There you can see it. So this is an important test. Make sure you can ping. Yes, and also I need to be able to ping the hardware VTEMP, so the other end of the underlay, that's really important before you get started with all these other things, make sure that you have the basics lined up, so you have basic connectivity, so dot one, that's my Aruba 6300, the hardware VTEMP, and I can ping that successfully. Okay, good, so we can tick that one off the list. And a quick plug for another one of my videos, if you're not sure how to set up the IP addressing, so using NetPlan, please check out my NetPlan video, link on screen now. With the IP addressing and the underlay working, now we're on to the next step, which I've chosen to install Docker. You can install OpenV switch first, but I'm going to, like I did in the high level overview, I'm going to install Docker now. And the way that I've done this is just using the commands that I got from docs.docker.com. I'll put a, try saying that fast, I'll put a link in the description. Just bring that up. Here we here we go. So it is the install Docker engine on Ubuntu at docs.docker.com. And I just followed these steps here to set up the repo. 
add the key, and then install Docker engine. So we'll go through those. I'm just going to copy and paste them in. Right, that's the first one. So first step is to remove any old versions of Docker. This is a new image, it's a new install. So I don't have any. Then we do an update, fine. I'll just, I'm just doing step by step. Then we have to install a number of packages. All looks good. Next up is a curl command. And then we have this command. We're essentially setting up the repo. There we are. Okay, now we do update. And you'll see there's a new repo in there. So you've got this URL to download.docker.com. Then here's the Docker install. So the app get installed. Okay, so that takes a little while to download and install. Good, done. Next up, I'm going to do the post install steps. So that we don't have to use sudo for each one of the docker commands and in here i'm putting joe you put your username okay then we log out i've logged back in so we should be able to do a docker version there we go no sudo commands from now on with docker and you can see the version there now also if we look Do an IP link there. You can see that you've got this Docker zero added. So we've got our two Ethernets on our server, that being our underlay, remember, ETH one, and we've got Docker zero added. So let's have a look at Docker zero. And there you can see, like I showed in the PowerPoint, it is 172.17.0.1 slash 16. So that part is created, this network and this bridge interface is created when you install Docker for the first time. Any containers that you create by default will be added to this network. Now that we've got Docker installed, I jump over to the other thread, which is to install Open vSwitch. Open vSwitch dash switch. Okay, go. Looks good. And you can test that with a sudo OVS dash VSCTL show. There you got the version. So we've got no bridge at the moment. Okay, now I'm going to jump back to Docker. I'm going to create my container. And I do a Docker run. So the installs are done. It seems like I'm flipping from Docker to Open vSwitch, but really what I'm doing is I do the installs first. So I install Docker, I install Open vSwitch, then I go and do the build. So I'm doing the Docker build first, and then I'm doing the Open vSwitch build. Hopefully that flow makes sense. So I'm going to create a container with the name of Deb1, and it's using the Debian image which we don't have locally because this is a brand new build. So that will take a little while to pull down the image. Okay, that looks complete. So we can do a Docker PS to check and there you can see that uh, the name Deb1, the image is Debian, it's up for seven seconds. And we can have a look at the networking aspects of that by doing this Docker exec command. So that will go into, it will run this command on, on dev1, we'll run this command. So I'll just do an IPA and it shows us there you've got that ETH zero. So this is all by default. And as you can see, it's been added to that Docker zero network. So the 172.17.0.2 slash 16. On that side, we should be able to, 17.1, uh, so we should be able to ping I do it correctly we should be able to ping the docker zero yes there we are so we have this internal network and connectivity there but nothing to the outside if i i do the ping at the moment just to prove it so what was it 172.18.1.1 that's where we want to go to okay so that, that doesn't work at the moment we don't have the connection to the open v switch and open v switch doesn't have vxlan configured yet that's what we're going to do now here's the steps then to configure open v switch it's ovs dash vsctl and we're going to add the bridge first 
the arc zero I've called it you can call it what you like let's do that show then to check the bridge there you can see BR0 you've got a port BR0 interface BR0 and it's internal at the moment only now this is quite a long command so I'm going to copy it across this is to turn on the VXLAN component here we are okay so it's OVS dash VSCTL add port. So I'm adding port to my bridge BR0. It's called VXLAN1. And then I've set that interface to the type of VXLAN there. And then you have these options. Now the options are this is the remote VTEMP that we want to connect to. So this is our underlay, remember, 10.150.99.1, which I, I pinged earlier. That's my Aruba 6300. And then you have this options key and this key is the vni now if you don't know about vnis that's essentially a bit like the vxlan identif well it is the vxlan identifier that's the id they call it a key here you can pick from one of 16 million different uh, ones you've got lot lots of choice but they do have to be the same at each end for this setup so that one will be i'll show you that on my switch that creates this particular VXLAN connection. Okay, we enter that in. I'll do a show command again. And then you can see, so we've got the VXLAN 1, interface 1. It's a type, it's a VXLAN interface. We've got the key of 1, and then you've got the remote VTEMP. If you're lost with this stuff, please do check out my VXLAN Explainer 1 video. Lots of information about this in there. And with VXLAN enabled on the bridge, now we're already on the final step to make that connection between our container, Deb1, and our OVS bridge, BR0. And we do that with this command, which is OVS-Docker, add-port, BR0, that being our bridge. This is the interface name, and that's our container. And I've given it an IP address. If you notice that IP address, the 172.18.1.51 slash 24, that's our customer emulated network. That's the traffic that's going to be encapsulated within VXLAN sent across the underlay to hit my hardware server on the other end of the link. This is the split subnet. So that's our last configuration step. Let's have a look at the bridge and we see that there's this new port here. That's the one that goes off to the container and we can trace that through. If we do a docker exec and we do on deb1 to IPA you actually see that remember I called it ETH1 there it is and it's got that 172.18.1.51 in the slash 24 address just as I configured and if you look for this port on the Ubuntu host so not in the container we'll copy that you can actually see it so if we do it's a show dev there we are and the thing that ties these together, so this is on the Ubuntu host, you can see this port that's been added to the bridge. And if you look there, it's interface 10, it's interface 10 on the container, and it's interface 11, it's interface 11 on the host. So this tells you what port it is on the host. That's quite useful if you're scaling up and you've got lots of different interfaces, you can actually go from the container to the host and tie those together. Okay, so that's the Linux server configured. Now I've jumped over to the hardware VTEP. So this is an Aruba 6300. I'll show you the config. I've already configured this. Check out my VXLAN explainer video if you really want some in-depth on this. The important points are the interface VXLAN 1. That's the source IP address. As you can see, that's the underlay network, the 10.150.99 network, we're dot one. That's the one that I pinged originally from the Linux server to prove that the underlay is working, if you recall. Then we've got the VNI. So the VNI on the Linux server is the key. If you recall that, so it was the OVS-VSCTL. It was the add port command. Let's have a look in the history, actually. Let's drag that across. So it's this command here. Now that command needs to tie up with the other end, so the VNI. So the key one is the VNI one on the 6300. This is the customer side, so that's the LAN, that's the binding between the traffic that's coming in and the VNI. I've got a couple of destination VTEMPs, but the important one for this setup is dot four. So that, if you recall, that is the IP address, that's ETH1, on my Linux server, on UB 
four. There we are. Okay, dot four there. That has to tie up and that will form each end of the VXLAN connection. Okay, now let's log into UB1, which is the other end of our link for our customer traffic. This is the ultimate source of destination for our pings. We need to get this, and it's actually a hardware server. It's Ubuntu running directly on, um, what I've got here is an HP Elite desk. And on this one, it is show dev, and it's ENO1. Okay, so there's our 172.18.1.1 out in the physical world. Right, so what we want to do to prove that this all works is we need to run a ping from, we'll do it from the container side first. Of course it's end to end. So we'll go container over to our server over here. Right, so fingers crossed. So we'll do a docker exec command in deb one and we will do a ping to 172.18.1.1 is this going to work if i type it correctly and it does work as you can see that ping is working it's probably easier if i bring up the slide to show you what's going on there okay so this is the traffic path then so we're sending a ping so an icmp echo request from our container deb one is going across this link to ovs it's been encapsulated within VXLAN, so it's got a UDP header, it's got a VXLAN header, an outer Ethernet and IP header. It's being sent across the underlay to dot one on this 10150.99 network. It's being decapsulated by our hardware VTEMP here, so our Aruba 6300, and it's being sent, so it's just being switched out towards the destination server, and that is 172.18.1.1. It is UB1, and then that sends the response back across the VXLAN network. It's decapsulated and forwarded on to our container. So we're going from the real world to the software world. Okay, that is uh, interoperability. Okay, so that's all working. Now, the next step I wanted to show you is some packet captures. I've mirrored this port here, and I'm going to pick that up on my Mac so we'll be able to see the traffic coming in and leaving from the VXLAN network. Here I am on Wireshark then, picking up those packets that are mirrored on the 6300. So we've got plenty of samples there. I'll pick one. Uh, so this is, we've sent it originally from Dev1. So I'll pick one of these. You can see it's an echo request. If we bring that up then, what we have, we've got the outer Ethernet header, we've got a VLAN to send it across the underlay, then we've got the outer IP header, and as you can see, the source and the destination, that's the underlay. So the dot four is my Linux server, and the dot one is my Aruba 6300, my hardware VTEMP and my software VTEMP. Then we've got a UDP header, we've got a VXLAN header. If you open that up, you've got the VNI. So VNI is what it's called on the Aruba switch, but it's called key on OpenV switch when you set that connection up. Then we've got the inner headers. So this is the encapsulated packet here. You've got the inner Ethernet header and you've got the inner IP header. If you look at the source there, so the source, that's Deb1, and that destination is that UB1 server. So this is like our customer side that we want to be encapsulated. And then we've got the UDP. And this is all working because if we look down, then you've got the reply. So we've got, it is all in reverse, essentially. So the source and the destination for the underlay is reversed. And the source and the destination of the customer servers is reversed. Okay, so that's the packets. And the final thing that I wanted to do is just scale this up. So if we copy this across, but I'll call it Deb2, it'll be much quicker. So it's created almost instantly because we've already got the Debian image. And once the container is created, we don't have to set up the OVS bridge or any, or the VXLAN again, of course. All we have to do is add the port to the container. So make sure that you bump the IP address and the name there. Okay, so we call it Deb2, do a Docker PS. So we've got our two containers. If we do a Docker exec and we'll go Deb2, ping 172.18.1.1 and it's successful. So it's as simple as that. So it's very easy to set up a new one. I mean, I'm doing it manually. This is very easy to script.
you just have to make sure that the variables that need to be altered are done so. There you go, it's successful. Okay, excellent. And the teardown, we can do a docker kill on dev1, dev2, dev3. You can remove those. Now we'll delete the port from the container and the bridge. and we can delete the bridge entirely. Bridge BR0. Okay, so if we do it sudo ovs-vsctl show, you see we're back. If we do an IP link, then you can see that we're back to the basic install of when Docker was installed and when OpenV switch was installed. So there's no configuration for that, allowing you to build this and play around again. Okay, so that's it for my Aruba OpenV switch VXLAN build. I hope you found that useful. Please do comment if you know of a better way for this. This was a bit of a punt, this video, because I haven't used Docker for so long. It's been years since I actually used it to build anything. But I thought this was interesting to show that interoperation between a hardware VTemp, the Aruba 6300, and a software VTemp and building these containers. Some other ideas that I've got is for automation because that container build is really conducive to being automated where you just don't bump the variables and then you can create this new container, build it and tear it down. That looks like something interesting to do. Plus to do this with IPv6, of course. So rather than just relying on that basic Docker Zero network or using V4. So I would need to use V4 for the underlay for this, but all of this and this side, this could all be IPv6 across a VXLAN network. So look out for future videos on that. And I will be continuing with my VXLAN explainer video. So I've got some ideas where I'm going with that with number three and four. So please do check out the Airheads broadcasting channel for that. But that just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching. My name is Joe Neville and goodbye. Three, two, one. Hello, Joe Neville here.